Um, my second one, and this is another question where you can go a lot of different directions, and it can be something like at a micro level, like something really specific or, or more general, but you always talk about, oh, you know, our culture, and we, we want our culture to help, you know, develop our players, and we want, you know, our culture to take over when we're in tough situations, and, and when we're, you know, in a game in the fourth quarter, our culture is going to matter, and I, and I think you hear that a lot, but what you don't hear or you don't hear as much is the specific details that help coaches actually build that culture, right? And I think it's something that if, I think by the nature of it, if you're not improving your culture, it's getting worse, or at least that's kind of where I'm at in, in my journey of, of learning about this, is it seems the great coaches that I know in terms of building programs and building culture in a program, they're constantly obsessed with improving it. So what's kind of one thing that you guys do in, in your programs, and it could be an element that is super important within your culture, or it could be like an like an activity or an action, you know, something that you guys do, whether it's something you demand out of your players or something you do as a coach um, that, you know, you think helps build that positive, uh, you know, culture that's going to drive the behaviors that, that you want to see in the program. Well, I'll jump in because I probably need to slide off after this. Uh, you know, for us, there's a couple of key pillars. Uh, number one is uh, no excuses, right? And when I say that, I mean, it, it starts with me as much as anybody else, right? Because we, we generally deal in a world of volunteer coaches. And when you get that, a lot of people feel that they need to come, they're able to come on their own terms and, uh, and dictate how they want to, want to volunteer. And we, we kind of, we don't do that at our place. I mean, there's, there's a lot of um, pieces uh, in, in that area as far as not making excuses if, if you can't make it in terms of time available for preparation. And that kind of takes itself over to the kids. And it started really when, when I began the program. Because how many of you have extent, external circumstances in and around your program that you believe negatively impact your program? So, uh, you know, the administrator, the, the superintendent, the principal, this person's not supportive, that person's not supportive, we don't have enough money, we don't have this, you know. And so for me, I, I think right out of the gate, it became about absolutely no excuses and find a way to get to a point where the people around you can say yes. And, you know, we, we were able to do that. I, I made every effort possible to build relationships with the right people in our administration, in our building, from the right counselors to uh, the right people in the community so that we could get the right, right amount of resources we needed around those kids. And, and I just find so many people want to make excuses about why it's not working in their situation. I remember early on, I had... Um, one of the guys that had previously been a basketball coach at the school and he didn't want to coach basketball anymore, still a young guy. And he said, and your kids have changed real big blanket excuse. And I said, kids haven't changed. You know, I, I, I when I, I was in Ontario last doing a coaching seminar and we were talking about program building. And one of the things I showed was um, a picture of bear Bryant, right? And bear Bryant, I had him in between Joe Namath and Ken Stabler. And you would have assumed that bear Bryant in the sixties Nobody ever dared cross him. And it would be easy to say kids have changed because people now want to challenge you at every opportunity. Well, the truth is, is that those two particular quarterbacks challenged Bear Bryant, who in the state of Alabama is probably God, right? They challenged him all the time. Those guys smoked while they were, you know, collegiate athletes, like at halftime of games, they caroused. Uh, we don't wonder one, maybe both of them at one point were kicked off the program before they wound up coming back. Kids haven't changed. Kids simply want to be led and they have to believe in the people that are leading them. So I, I think it, it comes down to us uh, setting an example and creating a no excuse environment for our coaches, giving them the resources they need to succeed, the parents in and around your program. I mean, how many of you complain that you don't have enough volunteer help? Here's the one thing a coach can never delegate. Don't make an excuse here. You can never delegate, delegate it. So if you want parents to help, if you want people to support your program, you directly have to make that ask. And then once you do that, now you can build your resources to do other things. But start with no excuses and begin that no excuse with yourself. The kids will see it, your assistant coaches will see it, and everybody else will, will buy in at that point. Thanks, Farhan. I appreciate you uh, you making the time. I know you're probably heading out here now, so thanks. That, that was yeah. an awesome answer. Appreciate Still it. Still two on leaves in case you care. <laughs> there you go. Go Buds. Go Buds. Awesome. Uh, Jordan, do you want to go next there? Because yeah. we, we put you at the back of the line last time. Um, for, for me, you know, we're pretty, we're very fortunate, honestly. Um, our principal at Facey is actually a uh, longtime coach, Barkley, who, uh, you know, really built the program to begin with. And uh, he took over three years ago. And, and he's honestly instilled such a great culture in the school that 
I would have been very stupid not to just piggyback off of a lot of the things that he was pushing because he's a very athletics driven principal. So we're very blessed for that. And uh, I think the biggest thing for us was, uh, you know, bringing in the right staff and the right people because, uh, you know, I've seen coaches and I'm just going off my playing experiences, bringing people and, you know, it's just, it's fire and ice. It, it's not going to work no matter, you know, how, how bad you want it to. And they still, you know, decide to bring people on just based on that. And I think, you know, having coaches and volunteers that really speak uh, the same language uh, as, as you want is important and kind of really believe in what you're saying as well. Um, because how, how can the kids, you know, buy in if your coaches can't. So that's been a big focus on us uh, with us and, and it's been great. Um, and then I think a big thing too, is just that, you know, I, I, I kind of pull from a lot of the coaches that I was with and, and coach Neil um, is a dear friend of mine and I, and I love that man. And, and he's uh, in my eyes, one of the best coaches in Canada. And, and, you know, his thing was just, you know, never let anyone outwork you and, and never let anyone just beat you because they wanted it more. Right. So, you know, we got to really hold the kids accountable and that starts with me. So that's making sure I'm on time for everything. You know, I'm doing everything in my dates and in the right times and, uh, and being organized because if I'm not organized, how can the kids expect me to be? So that's a big driving force. Um, and then to just building this culture of, of like working hard, like it's not like working hard. Isn't no fun. Like it is, it's very rewarding in the end. And I think kids just really want to, show up and just show up to games and play and, and, and that, that's it. But, you know, at least in our league, you can't do that. Right. Because there's, you know, a team in Edmonton that's just going to beat you up at the end of the year. Right. So um, it's really in, installing this, this work ethic with these kids. And, uh, and I'm, I'm so excited to get going and hopefully it's sooner than later. <laughs> I'm sure everyone else is. Can go next then. Um, for us, we, we, we involve our kids with, uh, you know, we, we talked, uh, Ferran talked about the pillars of his team and stuff. And we, uh, every, every springtime, we have, uh, have a team meeting with, uh, with about 15 to 20 leaders of, uh, of our team, mostly seniors, but uh, involved juniors as well uh, in, the, in that meetings. And we kind of define again every year what's our the, the team mission, the team goals, what will be our, our team's uh, pillars for, for the following year. And for year to year, to be honest, it doesn't change that much. But it's all it's always good to have that those kind of conversation with your with your leaders. So every spring, that's something that we that we do, um, not allowing any negativity. You know, like um, I don't know if you if you watch uh, th that guy on on YouTube, uh, Joko Willick. I don't know if you if you uh, extreme ownership, if you read his book and stuff like that. But uh, there's a there's a short uh, clip. Uh, it's called Good. If you have a chance to to watch it, it's awesome. And it's so every time there, there's adversity, okay. I mean, always try to find the positivity and, and and be a solution finder. You know, that's something that we try to. Uh, you know, we, we want to give them life lesson. You know, that's so that's a, that's that's super important. You know, whenever there's a, there's adversity, let's try to find the, the positive of it and let's find solution. Um, and ultimately, when you're you're a veteran, or um, you know, uh, taking church, are in charge of the culture. This is this is a good uh, this is a good sign. For example, like whenever we do sprints and stuff, like we ask our kids to get their feet behind the white line. It's not on the white line. You're behind the white line. For example, so if you know just details like that, uh, when when we do when we do sprints or conditioning, we don't want any kids having or either head hands on their on their heads or or hands on on their hips. You know, like we don't want to show any sign of weakness and stuff like that. That's something. I, I got from uh, from my playing playing time at, uh, at Laval University, and you know, so all those little details, um, you know, and and at the end, ultimately, their veteran are taking over or taking care of it, and they're they're calling out the younger kids, hey, make sure you're behind the white line and stuff. So so, so that's whenever your your leaders are are taking care of the culture, I guess that's uh, you're, you're you're going in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. That that's one of the hardest things I've found. Again, like my experience as a head coach is with the summer football program. So we have our guys for such a short period of time. Um, but it's amazing to see like we 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 had one season, 2016, we won the provincial championship and we were, you know, super talented. You know, there's already been uh, you know, like one of our tackles on that team is a CFL draft prospect, Gordon Lambs and all Canadian, bunch of guys, really, really great players. And uh it was interesting because it was my first year as the head coach and we we recruited 
much more than we had in the past. So we actually had a really different team than ever before. And I think it helped us because a lot of guys, like you, like you mentioned, the, the whole, like the traditional hierarchy in the team was kind of disrupted because some of our best players were, you know, coming from, from other places. And we had guys that, you know, maybe had been captains before in the organization that were now fighting for a starting spot. And uh, we really went from, I, I kind of looked at it and I was a super young head coach at the time, you know, Jordan, the similar situation to what you're in, you know, and, and I remember thinking, oh, if I bring this energy and bring this culture, it's going to make it happen. And then I realized about four or five weeks in, I'm like, if I don't have the, if all these players aren't, once they start policing it, it was like exponential. It was like, we went from having not all these problems to no problems, but when I stopped trying to be the enforcer of it and I started empowering players to do that, I think that was, that was like one of the first really big lessons in, in my career. And I'm glad I learned it because, you know, I didn't, that, that team was so good. I'm glad I didn't screw it up. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's a great, that's a great point. Anybody have anything else to add there on that question? Jackson, um, you know, when, when I read that question, um, positive culture, couple things came to my mind. One was about football and the program. And then one was, you know, kind of like what Jordan alluded to about community life and being that great person and using football as a metaphor for life. And I try to do that every day, regardless if it's just for the football team and winning championships and winning games, but more, more about metaphors of life. You know, for, for me, when it comes to the football side of things, you know, obviously you have to have an administration. You guys have mentioned it, who believes in the program and is going to support you, right? Without that, ain't, nothing's going to happen for you. And then, of course, your off-season work, your, your skill development sessions, all those are in place and well, well known in advance. Alumni rate, relations for us, you know, a school that's been around since 1899, it's been an important part of uh, things that I've been really involved in. And coaches in the past have, have started such a great tradition and legacy here at this school. And so I just piggy bank off of what's already been here and really uh, fine-tune that alumni relations, bringing them on campus, working with our kids, telling them life stories about their journeys. And then social media. And, you know, in this COVID year, you know, more than anything, I've really turned my attention to how can I help my kids out via social media, give them a positive experience, bring in U.S. U sport coaches and college coaches to them via Zoom meetings. We've had probably now almost a dozen uh, U sport coaches present to our players, which has been really good. And then, you know, um, you know, that other part, that, that positive culture and metaphor for life is, you know, you know, teaching them to be excellent at everything that they do, you know, um, kind of, I read a book by Lou Holtz and these three, three things, you guys probably read it and, or know about it really resonated with me. And that's kind of, you know, being excellent in everything you do, right. Um, you know, doing what's right, right. Everything you do, you know, when you walk in the hallways, are you the guy that's just going to walk right, right by a piece of garbage? You're going to be the guy that, you know, picks that up and throws it out, right. You know, how, how's character defined that those kind of things I try to teach them every day. And then, you know, showing people you care, right. You know, you want to ask a team, you know, can I trust you, right? So they have to believe in each other, trust each other, and believe in us as coaches. One thing I firmly believe is being transparent. And I think that's going to help your program. That's going to keep, help keeping the guys in the program, right? We have 40-plus guys in our program, and we have very few. I mean, maybe one that has ever played both ways. And so I've got to be real clear with everyone that may not be a starter, say, hey, this is going to be your role. And, and right from the start, and if it changes midweek and, and competition makes that happen, that's great. But and then if the starter loses that job, he's going to know it won't be a surprise come game day. And I think that's going to be that's an important thing for, for, for all of our young players so that they stay involved in the game. They understand the process and they enjoy the whole ride for sure. Um, I guess I can chime in. Um, so I think one thing that um, dawned on me when you asked that question was that, um, you know, for us, it's it's about the program. It's not about necessarily the players or the coaches or the parents or even that specific team of that year. Every decision that we make uh, is about what makes our program better. And, and that's been one thing that's been really successful for us because, you know, sometimes you, you're making tough decisions that, that might hurt a player or that might hurt your team for that given year. Um, but everything we do is, is about making our program better as a whole. And that means the, the, 10, 15, 20 years before us and the 10 or 15, 20 years after us um, that our, it's a brand that we're creating within our community. And, and so that uh, kids that are coming up now, um, brothers and younger brothers that are coming up, friends of families, they understand um, the way we do things and the decisions we make, um, you know, we're, whether it's about accountability or whether it's about, you know, leadership and community work and all this elements that go into a good high school football program. But for us, really, every decision we make is 
is going to be about the program as a whole and what makes that program better. And sometimes I think teams, you know, I can speak when I see, you know, on the field or talking with other coaches is a lot of the decisions that are made are, are being made for that current year. So something happens and maybe you're, as a coach, you make a decision that goes against some of the principles that you're trying to teach these players because, I don't know, it's a playoff game or it's a big game or, you know, you can't do this because he's this player. And, and that stuff happens all the time and I see it. And ultimately, I think that's just very short-sighted. And I think any program that has a good history, I would say, of winning, uh, they've probably made those decisions and it's probably cost them at some point. Um, but the long game is where, you know, I think people need to, to head a little bit more. So if you're starting a new program or you're in the middle of taking one over or you've taken one over from some guy that built one up, um, you have to keep that brand in mind of what you're preaching to your players and to especially the external people because, you know, whatever we tell our players, that, that player is going to tell his little brother and that player is going to tell his friend and, and that gets kind of embedded throughout the community. So you need to know when a – a 14 year or 15 year old kid shows up through your doors to try out in day one that they understand the expectations and that can happen far better, you know, through word of mouth and through experiential learning than it does with some PowerPoint that I present them in week one, because ultimately those, you know, it's a culture and that's what we're talking about. And culture is not built in a year. Culture for me is built over time. And uh, so it's an investment in yourself and your team and, you know, if you're building something, if you're willing to bite the bullet and, and swallow your pride a little bit, I think uh, you get the long-term payoffs for sure. That we have, especially. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, so it's one of the things that sounds like so simple to agree to. And then you as a coach, you have so many moments where you actually have to check in and, and make those decisions. It's so easy, especially in high school football, when there's so much you don't control right right from your roster through your roster's work schedule through you know uh the not having well i mean in some cases you do have access to your kids all year but you know they're in an all likelihood right there's long portions of the year that football is not their number one you know priority right just realistically most high school students that would be true um you know it's definitely a challenge is there was there any other uh points anyone want to get in on, on the question about developing a positive culture yeah, I'd like to share what uh, what we do at Assumption, Jackson, if I could. Yep, for sure. Just and just what the other coaches mentioned there, all of that. Uh, I think we all do kind of uh, different chunks and components of that in our own way uh, with our own programs there. But one thing I found when I when I took over as a, our senior football head coach, um, I wanted to make it about relationships, and I know that's a very generic term, very broad term, but for me, the relationships that our players have with each other, the relationships our players have with the school, um, and the relationship us as coaches have with our players. Um, player to player, you know, be a good teammate. Teach them about being, being a good human being. Make that connection and bond uh, together as, as players on the same team. Uh, player to the school relationship, be a good leader in that school. Be the role model that we all want to see our players be walking through the halls. Uh, coach mentioned, you know, are you the, the guy that stops and picks up the garbage or are you the guy that walks by it, right? That type of stuff. Don't be uh, a detriment to your school community. And then the coach to player part, that's probably for us the most important one. If we don't have that relationship built and the ability to connect with those players, anything else that comes after that's not going to work. The X's and O's aren't going to work. The commitment's not going to work. The buy into any kind of culture program uh, um, mantra that you have isn't going to work. If they don't believe that you have a connection and you uh, uh, connect with them as a person, for me, I don't think there's going to be anything else uh, that can follow that. So I really push that on our players. I push that on our assistant coaches. And I have a fantastic group of assistant coaches with me uh, currently, and they're all about the relationship. The positional coaches uh, make that connection and bond with their guys. The OC and DC make that connection and bond with their guys. So it's it's been really successful for us. One other thing I added too to our program in 2018 was, um, and and many of you that coach in high school football, you probably have you know junior team uh, is one set of coaches, one area of the field. Uh, senior team is the other set of coaches in the other area. In 2018, I, I uh, kind of brought a little bit of that together 
we start now, so from 2018 on and in 2019, we start our practices with the junior and senior teams combined. So they do a combined warm up and stretch, dynamic warm up together. Uh, they do some combined conditioning, and then they roll right into some combined indie drills with you know junior and senior uh, positional coaches running their indie drills. Uh, obviously, we're not having big you know seniors banging on a uh, uh, grade nine uh, youngster and that, but we combine them together in the same indie. Uh, periods. And I found that it's been beneficial because it allows my senior guys to step up and show leadership, brings the leaders to the top. Um, it, it shows a little, allows them to show a little bit of mentorship, you know, a, a grade 12, uh, grade 11, being able to kind of mentor a grade nine who's maybe new to the game, maybe new to the high school uh, and create that bond that they, they can then grow together through the program. Right. So I found that that in 2018, it was a little bit apprehensive because it was new for our program and never did that before. It was always junior went one way, senior went the other way. Um, but in 2019, continuing that, uh, our guys kind of really bought into it. And and I could see it wasn't, you know, we started out where all the juniors were together on one side of the warm-up, all the seniors were together on the other side of the warm-up. And then as we grew through the season, they were all intermixed. You know, it could be junior, senior, junior, junior, senior. They were all in and all interacting together and, and just, became one great big team run for our program. So I found that that's been pretty beneficial for us in building a positive culture for our program as well. No, for sure. And, and uh, it's interesting. Like I'm from Guelph originally and, and, you know, we didn't have junior and senior football. So I found our, our high school team was super close because, you know, a lot of guys, you know, you don't have junior and senior, like I knew guys, brothers, and, you know, it's not that, you know, you're, you obviously have your group that you move up through with, that you're obviously close with your, your graduating class and the guys that are kind of one year below and one year above, you know, but it's, it's funny now, it's like some of my best coaching connections are guys that were either, you know, a couple years older than me or even a couple years younger than me that are now getting into it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's, I think something, I think you, you don't lose the camaraderie obviously, but for, for the, and there's huge benefits to having junior football. I would have played a few more snaps had we not had we had a junior team for sure. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's interesting. I think, you know, you have that opportunity to like, again, coming back to your, uh, your point coach was the creating opportunities for the players to, to really be in charge of that culture. And, you know, it's what it's, it almost gives them a, a chance to not practice being a leader on the younger guys, but you're probably a little more comfortable stepping out of your comfort zone and, and saying to a grade nine, hey, like, you know, like you said, coach, get your feet across the line, right? And then the more you do that, the more likely you are to probably point that out to, you know, one of your buddies who's maybe your age or close to, you know, and it, it's, you know, it's the accountability. Like the difference between calling somebody out to call somebody out and to keep somebody accountable. I think people think, you know, there's a lot there, really. I mean, it's just if your team wants to be good, they're accountable, right? So, you know, someone missing an opportunity to help your team, you know, have that accountability is, I think, you know, I know that can be tense in terms of players, but I mean, if ultimately if those players have the right priorities, you know, that that's the type of team that we all want to have and that all players should want to play on. Um, so those are awesome, awesome points, guys. If anything comes up, you know, feel free to, you know, come back to it. But we are going to go to some questions um, from the chat here. And there's some good ones. So, guys, if you have more questions, um, throw them in the chat. I'm going to get to some of these as we go through here. Some of them are kind of similar, so I'll, I'll kind of get – different questions up first and then maybe we'll go back to some of them. Um, and the other thing I was going to mention is, you know, if you like the video, it helps more people see it. Um, so it's not like it's making us any money, but it just helps more people find it. We're more likely to be found by, by people if, if you like the video. So if you are watching, you haven't liked it yet, throw a like on it. If